Welcome to ASU's University Academic Success Programs. This video will cover the topic, Resonance. Resonance allows us to account for delocalized electrons. What does it mean when electrons are delocalized? Delocalized electrons have the ability to move around in a structure because they're not associated with a single atom or bond. Because of this, we can't draw a single Lewis structure to describe the molecule. Instead, the actual structure is a resonance hybrid and takes the contributing structures into account. The delocalized electrons are in a conjugated system. What is a conjugated system? Conjugated systems are comprised of p-atomic orbitals that are connected across multiple atoms. In a conjugated system, p-atomic orbitals overlap across adjacent atoms, forming an extended pi system. sp3 hybridized atoms cannot be involved in conjugated systems because they don't have p-atomic orbitals to contribute. For example, let's take a look at the following structure. In this structure, the carbon atom is sp3 hybridized because it has a single bond to nitrogen and three single bonds to hydrogens. This tells us that the carbon is not included in the conjugated system. Okay, so the only atoms in the conjugated system are the two oxygens and the nitrogen, right? That's right. Now we see that there's a negative charge on one of the oxygen atoms. However, this negative charge could have been drawn on the other oxygen atom. This would happen if we were to push the electrons from the oxygen on top into a bond and push the electrons from the double bond onto the oxygen on the bottom. We show the movement of electrons by drawing curved arrows. The curved arrows show the electrons that move and each arrow represents two moving electrons. Since we see two arrows in this process, this tells us that we have four delocalized electrons. If we draw the second structure, we see that there are two possible resonance contributors for the molecule. To properly identify these as resonance contributors, we draw resonance arrows between the structures and brackets around them. So how do we draw the actual structure? To draw the resonance hybrid, we identify what parts of the two structures remain constant. We see that the only things that change are the location of the double bond and the location of the lone pair of electrons. To account for this, we draw dashed lines between the three atoms involved in the conjugated system. In this case, the negative charge is equally distributed on both of the oxygen atoms, so we say that each one has a half negative charge. Sometimes, the two resonance contributors do not contribute equally to the resonance hybrid, as in this example. Let's take a look at a new structure. In this case, the oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen participate in a conjugated system. The lone pair of electrons on nitrogen can be pushed into a double bond, and the electrons from the carbon-oxygen double bond can be pushed into a lone pair on oxygen. However, the structure on the right is much higher in energy than the structure on the left because of the formal charges. Because electrons want to be as low in energy as possible, the structure on the left contributes significantly more to the real structure than the contributor on the right. We call the structure on the left the major resonance contributor and the structure on the right the minor resonance contributor. Couldn't we push the electrons in the carbon-nitrogen double bond back into a lone pair on nitrogen, resulting in a positive charge on carbon? Hypothetically, yes, but this results in a structure that's even higher in energy than the minor resonance contributor. Because this structure contributes so minimally to the real structure, we call this an unreasonable resonance contributor. Okay, so in order to have resonance, we must have a conjugated system in which more than two adjacent atoms have overlapped p-atomic orbitals. Delocalized electrons have the ability to move between atoms in conjugated systems and allow us to draw more than one Lewis structure for a molecule. We call the possible structures resonance contributors, and based on these, we can draw the more accurate resonance hybrid. Sometimes resonance contributors contribute equally to the actual structure, and sometimes we will have major and minor resonance contributors. That's exactly right. Great work. 